Welcome to another episode of Recapping with Cam. If it's your first time, then I'm Cam. Hello. And I'm going to talk about some things with some people that are not happening right now that maybe happened recently. Uh, it was Halloween this weekend, and not because of it being Halloween this weekend, just because I enjoy horror movies. I watched a couple of horror movies. I watched two back to back. If you like horror movies, I'd recommend one of them. Um, the Lodge. It's on Amazon Prime, and it's a slow burner. It's um, it's one that you kind of have to pay attention to to keep track of what's going on. But it's probably, I'd say, it's one of the best horror movies I've seen in a while. If you liked Hereditary and Midsummer, it definitely has that kind of slow getting under your skin feeling. So I'd, I'd highly recommend that. I um, every now and then, probably twice a week, go to a place close to my work for lunch. It's called Bucking Bull. And um, they serve roast meals for cheap. It's like fast food, except if you feel like a roast lamb and uh, roast vegetables. I go there probably, well, not probably, definitely more often than is healthy. And when I was there last week, I did a bit of eavesdropping. It wasn't my plan when I went to lunch. I wasn't like, that's what I feel like doing. It was more while I was there, I didn't have my headphones. A group of 20 year olds, I'd say like, between five and eight 20 year olds sat down and just started kind of gossiping, talking about their lives. One girl was talking about the guy that she was seeing and she was like, yeah, whenever he, um, whenever he puts his hand on my leg or holds my hand, it's so gentle. Like I can feel myself getting goosebumps in a bad way as his hand gets close. And she was like demonstrating on her friend, like lowering her hand down towards the friend's knee and they were like creeping each other out. And then one of the friends was like, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's a real soft touch. And then one of the guys in the group who hadn't hadn't said anything up to that point, his ears pricked up and he was like, soft touch. That's the worst insult that a guy can get. He kind of got quite serious about it. I was just still eating my roast lamb, shoveling roast veggies into my mouth, pretending not to listen. And then they were kind of, they kind of carried on. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, no. No, seriously, if a guy calls another guy a soft touch, it's um, it kind of, it ruins your reputation in that group of friends. And I kind of wanted to, to interject there, but it, it wasn't, um, they're not my friends, so I couldn't. He carried on, he was like, when I got called that once, the way that I fought against it is I grew my hair out. And I had to kind of turn my head to see what hairstyle he had, he had chosen to battle against <laughs> the um the labeling of being a soft touch and it was kind of it was i don't know jennifer aniston in the peak of her career but with no highlights so kind of long straight i imagine like really light like you could barely feel it and i definitely wanted to interrupt then there was a few things that i wanted that i wish i could have said hey as i wiped the gravy off my lips excuse me <laughs> but the first thing i want to say is hey man if you get called a soft touch, and I say this as a man who has been called that, don't worry about it. The people that are calling you that are probably in their middle age. They're going to realize, yeah, I probably, I should have talked about my emotions in my life so that, so that I wouldn't have this middle-aged crisis. I think that soft touch isn't normally just about whether you hold hands softly. It's like, oh, you spoke about emotions. Soft touch, don't worry about the kind of dudes that call you a soft touch would have been the first thing that I'd say. The second thing, and I think maybe even more important, is if you want to fight the label of soft touch, <laughs> that haircut is not going to do it. <laughs> oh, man. A conversation I did have intentionally that I was a part of and that <laughs> and that I wasn't just one-sidedly listening and adding interjections mentally was a conversation I had with Amon from the chats. So you're in the middle of recording. You Is that what you're up to today? Yeah, yeah. We're doing a couple of new stuff, new songs for the chats, yeah. Yeah, man. And how's it going? Uh, that's uh, top secret confidential stuff. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
You can't even say good. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's going terrible. <laughs> That's why it's top secret. <laughs> mm. No, it's going good. It sounds great. Yeah, man. And I know, I know it's probably a little private, but is it, um, is it an EP or full length? Uh, don't really have any plans at this point. It's kind of just working on new stuff, putting yeah. ideas down, not, not trying to lock into anything, but yeah, just doing some new stuff. It's exciting. It's good. Yeah, man. Awesome. Um, well, I know that we're well in advance, so I won't, I won't dig too much about what the songs are about or what's going to happen with them, but I'm really excited to hear them. What else has been happening in life, man? Are you, are you feeling okay with everything that's going on in the world? Like what's, how have you been kind of staying sane? Yeah. I mean, I guess the world's pretty fucked, isn't it? But I don't know. Just try to do your own thing every day. I don't know. I try to, uh, I try to, you know, keep up to date, but also not let it rule my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Yeah. Just start. Well, I guess everything's been all right in Queensland for the past few months. So we've been pretty all right here. Whereas a, a certain state might not have been. Are you still in Melbourne? I've actually moved from Melbourne to Perth about three months ago. Oh, that's good timing. Yeah. So I, I had a bunch of horrible things happen in Melbourne. Um, but like I got bullied at a job. I, um, I had a breakup and I lost my job that I was doing because of coronavirus. And then I got a job offer here. I'd never been here, but I was like, you know what? I might just give it a whirl. So yeah, I'm here now, which I'm really kind of relieved about. Yeah. Cool. How are you liking it? Do you like Perth? I do like it. It feels a little slower. The streets are really wide and I don't have a mode of transport. So I've been realizing like you look on a map, oh yeah, I can walk there. And I've been like, whoa, okay. I shouldn't have just guessed that I could walk there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I think like that, that's such a bad review of Perth. Like anyone in Perth who listens to that will be like, is that really what you've taken away from <laughs> three months? And that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, really. walking's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my review of WA. <laughs> <laughs> I play in a band called Charging Stallion. I do a podcast with a dude in that band. And that that is the hardest thing about being away from Melbourne, not being able to be like with Timmy and the other people that I create things with. But now that I'm doing stuff again, we're going to carry on with the podcast from here. Um, we just recorded an EP ourselves just before I left. So that's going to be mixed and mastered and we're still going to carry on as best we can with that project. And then I'm trying to trying out other stuff like this as well. Great, man. Yeah. I, I'll say on that subject, I got to ask, mm. is that, um, euphoric Queensland song, is that written about a specific part of Queensland or just the whole state? Oh man. Um, I'm amazed and like kind of flattered that you know that song. Um, Timmy wrote that. So Timmy's from, Timmy's from Queensland and that uh, uh, he's probably going to like, he'll listen back to this and he'll be like, nah, man. <laughs> but that's basically his love letter to the entire region of Queensland. So I think that he name checks a couple of specific parts. Um, the story bridge. Mm. Do you aware of the story bridge? Yeah, I live like 10 minutes from there. I, I just thought there might be some cool backstory, like, oh, we were sitting in an old Queenslander in Toowoomba or something. I don't know. <laughs> Timmy basically is that old Queenslander. So he grew up in Brisbane. I'm not sure. I don't know exactly what part, but that's his that's his neighborhood. So like all of those spots that he's naming is like where he where he grew up. But when he brought that song to band practice, I... um. I was like, I've never been there, bro. I feel a little bit, <laughs> I feel a little bit weird singing it, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I guess, that, I guess it makes it all the better when you finally get there. It's like, ah, oh, I get what he's talking about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what's your favorite part of Queensland? Do you have a spot that like, when you go to, you feel like, oh yeah, this is like full of memories or like, this is a big part of my growing up? Yeah, well, I grew up in Mackay, which is not, like North Queensland, but it's probably about halfway up North. Yep. Like halfway in the, in the middle, but it's central Queensland and it's just like a mining town. It's definitely not my favorite part, but it's very nostalgic, you know, going there for Christmas or whatever. But uh, I don't know, maybe I got to say my favorite part, Queensland is probably, I really like Cairns, Cairns mm -hmm. rules. 
just lots yeah, of depends. fun memories there, mates that lived there, or you just went there as like a blow off some steam I've only, the area? I've only been there a couple of times, but it's just always really nice. I don't know. Maybe I've just been there on like the two nicest times that it's ever been. Might be shit every other day. But... <laughs> yeah, man. Cairns locals are like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro. I that, um, was that childhood memories? Yeah, yeah. I went there once as a kid and then mm. once with the band a couple of years ago. Yeah, there's something about childhood memories, eh? Where even if you're doing something pretty straightforward, the wonder of like you being new to life makes you think, oh, this is impressive. Because I remember mm. like some of my most cherished childhood memories is like going for a bike ride with my friend Hayden, biking through some ditches, and then making swords out of like long branches, like just using a pocket knife to cut them into sharp ends. And if I suggested that these days, someone would be like, I just don't have the time. I don't see what I get out of that. <laughs> but I think yeah. that when you're younger, you just have this kind of like this untainted excitement for, for kind of more basic things. Do you feel like you've still got that? Yeah. Yeah. I think in, in some ways, definitely. I tried, I try to, um, try to be in touch with my child self as much as possible. Yeah, man. So I feel like, you know, you, you ask the, the best questions as a kid, you know, you want to learn the, you know, most, the least obvious things about the world, you know? Yeah, man. That's awesome. So you feel like you're still able to be absorbing things and learning things. Yeah. And yeah, I've always kind of been a big kid anyway, but yeah <laughs> yeah man no but, i love yeah. that what do you feel like you've been kind of learning or what's something that you've been excited to learn more about recently i think just about like people and you know like having conversations and you know being in social settings and stuff you know it's something i never ever thought about and then like growing up a bit you kind of like you know know you know just better at like making conversations and stuff you know something i was never really good at but I yeah think now you definitely learn some things that can't really be taught, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Just more people often, skills, I guess. Yeah, I get that. The more often you're putting yourself in that situation where you need to stretch or you need to grow to adapt to it, the better you do get at it. It's the same as any skill really. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like any hobby. Something new in my life is uh, I got a cat about eight months ago. It's name's little buddy. And I never thought that I'd be a cat person, but a cat kind of turned me into a cat person. I used to be a dog person and um, my friend's cat is called Kittles. And this cat had a real puppy-like um, nature to it. And it kind of switched me. I never thought that I'd have that kind of change. It feels like something you kind of lock into as a young person, but I switched from being a dog person to being a cat person in the last few years. And I'm loving having a cat these days. Sick. Uh, Mr. Mr. Buddy was all right to come to WA with you? I think that she was kind of hating, she would have hated the flight. Like when she got out of the crate thing, she was like, she doesn't, she's not a very talkative cat, but she was talking a lot. Mm. Like, and you can tell it was like, where were you <laughs> type sort of like she was, it was not happy noises, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice to have her, nice to have her here. You got any animals of your own? Any pets? No, no. The only pet I ever had was, um, I had a goldfish when I was like five and the day I got it, it died the next day. Brutal. So I kind of just went, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm done with pets now. Did you but, have it? Yeah, but yeah, Sparky. Sparky. Damn, Sparky. Yeah. I didn't know the pain that it was going to cause you <laughs> 24 hours. Yeah, I, I know. It was like, it was not even 24 hours. Like I got it the afternoon, next morning, gone. I was like, fuck, that's so, yeah, I was kind of just like, oh, that's it for me. But funny you mentioned a cat. We had a, uh, we had a housemate just over a year ago who got a cat and she wasn't really taking care of it as much as I was. And so the cat would kind of sleep with me and hang out with me a lot. Mm. She, you know, she wouldn't change the litter box and stuff. So the cat would have to find places to shit, obviously. Yeah. And once it just took this like steaming, like massive, like dirty diarrhea shit, like down the curtain. Oh. Like, so it was like, drip, it was like dripping down. I kind of went in there. I was like, Hey, um, you know, cats, cats done a big old shit. Can you, uh, you know, can you clean that up? She's like, Oh, it's gross. Hey, like just walking away. That's disgusting. Eh? <laughs> Does not yeah, so I, give a cat. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a great cat, but it was just that that kind of made me go, Oh man. Like, like even though it wasn't 
my cat, it kind of felt like me and Macy, my girlfriend's cat, like we were taking care of it a lot, but I was kind of like, man, I'd definitely, I don't know. I'm just not old enough to have a pet. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I can bet. I can barely wipe my own ass, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> what else is going on? What else feels new in life? Like you're, you're in a great position. You're in a, a well-deserved situation right now. I feel like it must be a really exciting situation to be able to do what you love and have audiences interested in seeing you perform that. And I'm so happy for you, man. What, what is next for you? Like what, what do you do from there? I guess. Well, well, with all the touring stuff going down, I've kind of just been making the most of not being on the road and, you know, just hanging out with Macy, my girlfriend and doing like normal people stuff like mowing the lawn and, you know, like going to the shops, you know, it's been, it's been really cool. Like, not waking up at like three in the Arvo every day and play, you know, it's, it's like a different, cause last year we were, we were going pretty hard. We were away for, we were away for eight months of the year and home for four of them. And roughly how so many was, gigs did you play in that eight months? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I reckon it'd be like a hundred and something. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it's a lot. And, but it's just been great. Like being at home and, not having to be jetting around and always exhausted and stuff. It's, I don't know. I sound like I'm complaining, but it's, it's really cool. Like, you know, doing the band stuff, but it's also nice just to like chill out for a bit and let yourself recharge. I think it's really important to have both. Totally. Yeah, man. That's awesome. What are you watching? Yeah. What are you absorbing to recharge? Um, reading a bit now. I've never, never was really a big reader. I was when I was a kid, but mm. kind of dropped off a bit reading a lot of Ramon stuff. Because I'm obsessed with the Ramones again, so yeah. I read um Dee Dee Ramones' book, The Chelsea Horror Hotel, yeah, and uh, On Road with the Ramones, which was like the Ramones tour manager book, and um Pig City by Andrew Stafford, which is this great, um, it's like Brisbane music scene from the early punk scene, in the seventies, all through to like you know Saints and all that, all through like Savage Garden and that. But it's also a really good like political history of Brisbane in that era. It's really cool. Yeah, true. Do you feel like Brisbane will always be home? Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I grew up in Mackay and then moved to the Sunshine Coast mm. in high school. I think Queensland will always feel like home to me. Not so much one particular city. Yeah. What about what about you? You're from New Zealand, aren't you? I'm from New Zealand. The area of New Zealand I'm from is Hawke's Bay, which is halfway up the North Island. It's on the um, East Coast. And it's kind of a, um, a slow moving town. It's beautiful. Like they've got heaps of wineries. I feel like there's a few towns that will always be home. Like I think that I always used to think oh, that you have to have one, but I think Hawke's Bay, there's another town in New Zealand called Wellington and then Melbourne, those three always kind of equally share that kind of home feeling. I feel like every time I return to them, I just feel that kind of relief. Like when you take it, a heavy bag off your shoulder like ah like it's mm. good to it's good to be here you know um yeah i think that i'd be comfortable i feel like i'm in a place now where i'd be comfortable to be living in any of those three cities i'm in like a transition period right now just adjusting to perth and i think personally my focus is like i just want to pour as much into my creative projects and my work as possible so I'm like doing this solo podcast, then still doing as much Charging Stallion as possible. And then I'm also writing some solo songs as well, just acoustic and singing. So yeah, even though Perth doesn't, and I think it takes a while for anywhere to feel like home, I do feel like right now I'm in the place that I should be creatively, which I think is important. That's great. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, bro. Well. That's, uh, that's funny you mentioned Wellington. I love Wellington. I think that's probably oh. my favorite New Zealand town. Yeah, bro. It's great. It's definitely got its own vibe, eh? How recently? Yeah, yeah. Um, last time we were there was October last year. But we've been, yeah, we've been a couple times. It's yeah. always been so much fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, I love Wellington. When I lived there, I had a moped and that is the funnest town to have a moped, but just because there's barely any flat surfaces. So you're just constantly straining the engine of it, just weaving in these real crazy angled streets, battling with the wind. 
it was always an adventure, like a pretty unsafe one, but yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's an awesome city. But fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. And where else would be like, tell me your top two places that you've seen over the last little while tour wise. Um, well, Amsterdam is my favorite, mm. not just, not just like for the weed or everything, just cause it's like, so it's like its own, there's nowhere else. It's like it, like everyone gets around on bikes and, I don't know. That's like the nightlife is crazy and yeah. just love Amsterdam. And, but the weed is a good bonus. Yeah. And um, let's see. I really love Texas. True. What's it like Austin. being in Texas? What's it like being in Texas? Yeah. Well, we went in July last year, which is in the, in the middle of that summer. So it was stupidly hot. Mm. It was like, you know, like Mount Isa kind of hot, real, real bad. And um, it was really cool. You know, we were 20, so we couldn't really go out to many bars or anything, yeah. but, but everyone was super nice to us. And, you know, most, most venues gave us beer and it was a good time. Yeah, man. <laughs> Love that. Um, I put something on my Instagram that was asking people what questions they'd like to ask you. Do you mind if I ask you one of those questions? This is from my friend, Didi. Go ahead. Didi says, I want to know who does your hair? Oh, so um, for a while, I just did it myself. Mm -hmm. And it looked and it looked a lot more shocking than it does now. But now I just usually do the front and I get Macy, my girlfriend, to do the back and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes no. mum, sometimes mum to do the back. Yeah. And usually no. Macy. Yeah. Awesome. Mine just started to fall out in the last couple of years. So now I also do mine, but I don't think that the shape that I'm achieving is quite as impressive as what you have. <laughs> I'll lend you some. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll post it to you. Well, it was a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for being part of Recapping with Cam. And um, if, what advice would you give people? Leave us on a positive, positive sentiment. Anyone who's listening right now who's like, what am I going to do with my day? The only person that's going to give me great advice on my day is Amon from the chats. Amon, tell oh. them. All right, listen. If you've had a party and you're cleaning up the next day and you find a can that's, you know, maybe got a little bit left in it, don't go ahead and just drink it because someone could have been using it as an ashtray all night and you could end up with a mouthful of ash first thing in the morning. Perfect. Quote me on that. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much for your time, Amon. Have a great week. Thanks heaps for having me. No worries, man. Take care. Have a good one, dude. Thank you for listening to another episode of Recapping with Cam. If there's anybody that you'd like me to speak to on the show, let me know on Instagram uh, at camread.normalday. I have a website now where I try to put all the short films or uh, comedy videos that I've made. It's heyitscam.com. And if you want to just come on the show and have a conversation, it has to be about things that have... Oh, nah, I'd make an exception. If you're somewhere interesting and you want to recap an event or a moment as it's happening, then let me know and I'll consider it. Whatever you're doing this week, be safe. Take care.